I was sitting at a cafe. My phone rang. I was rejected after a job interview I wanted very much. I started to cry. An old man sitting across me asked me why I was crying. I said, although I have the necessary qualifications, I couldn't get the job. They didn't want me. He asked, why do you want this job so much? I said, it's a well-paid, secure job, big corporate company. He asked, what do you want to do there? I said, marketing. He asked, what does it mean? And I couldn't answer him. And it dawned on me, although five minutes before, I thought I missed the opportunity of my life and felt devastated. I didn't know what I wanted to do in this job. So I came home, cried a couple of hours more. I was 39 years old, sitting at home, thinking what I wanted to do with my life for the very first time. I know I'm not the only one in this situation. Most people don't know what they want to do with their lives. More sadly, they don't even think they should find it out. There are certain paths for certain people anyway. Why bother to look for a different path? Why to choose a difficult road? If you don't draw your path, someone else does it for you. If you don't know what you want in life, Others will decide your trajectory of your life. And this will most probably make you unhappy and feel lack of things because it will be based on others' agenda, not yours. This is about independence, freedom, finding your core, being yourself. I asked myself why I was so unhappy. I had done everything right. I had graduated from one of the top universities of Turkey. I spoke two foreign languages. I had worked in one of the biggest corporate companies of Turkey for many years. I had got married to a top university graduate like myself at 31. I had given birth to a son at 32. How had I come to this miserable point? Then I thought about my life thoroughly. Since the fifth grade, I had prepared myself for the exams, first for the high school, then for the university. And I had been selected for the schools according to my points. After I graduated from the university, I had applied for the available positions in big corporate companies. Again, I was selected for one. So I started a job, I got bored, I looked for another available position in big corporate companies according to my experience and background. So I am felt lucky if I have was selected for one again. So at what point of my life did I have the chance to think what I really wanted? I didn't have the luxury to choose between well-paid jobs. They chose me. My path was drawn beyond my control. And this is the situation for many of us. My life started to follow a pattern. I started a job, I went to that job every day, I earned some money, I spent the money I earned with my friends and family in my spare time again and again. I felt boredom, lack of enjoyment and dissatisfaction in my every job. I had no purpose. I tried to cover my unhappiness with fancy dinners, parties and holidays. My life continued like that. At this stage of my life, I decided to change things. This time, I wasn't going to look for a job because I needed to satisfy my insecurities and fears, but this time I was going to find what I really wanted. So I borrowed some money from my friends and family and I sat at home for one year doing nothing, just sitting, thinking, reading and analyzing myself. Now I'm here on this stage giving you this talk I still have the same education, the same number of foreign languages, the same background, the same family, the same friends, even the same apartment. So what do you think has changed? I decided I won't let my life happen to me. I decided that I will take the control of the direction of my life. I won't let the system ruin my life. So after one year sitting at home, I found the aim of my life. The aim of my life is to create awareness in people, 
that they can change their lives only by changing their way of thinking. My way of thinking. I think I'm in control of that. So does that mean I can change my life in a way I want to? Our brains work in mysterious ways. If I make myself believe in something, I, my brain tries to find ways to realize it every second unconsciously. So if I believe I will fail in something unconsciously, I create it. We create our realities from inside out. My way of thinking can create wonders for me or can harm me enormously. I don't know any bigger power than that. So if we have so much power within ourselves, why is there so much despair and unhappiness in this world? Is it because we don't feel and believe in this power of ours? Can I make people believe in themselves? Can I at least try? So I decided I want to rise by lifting others. I think this was the most profound decision I've ever made. I felt so light. After all, finally, I knew what I wanted to do with my life. We ask zillions of questions, our friends, family, colleagues, teachers, when facing a decision. We fix and solve dozens of problems every day about daily work, errands, etc. But what about our inner selves? Are we even trying to get to know ourselves? What is it that keeps us from discovering ourselves, although we spend so many hours on external problems? Is it the fear of not being able to achieve what we really want? Is it ignorance? Or don't we even believe in such a thing as inner self? Can we be happy without knowing ourselves? During this one year, I sat at home. I decided to work on my future as if it were the most important project of my life. As a matter of fact, it was. So I asked myself, how do I show up every day? What is my, well, how do others see me? What is my dominant mood? How would I like to see myself? Where would I feel relaxed and happy? What do I want that others would think of me? What is the greatest ideal of myself? These were the questions I needed to answer in order to get to know myself better. Once a friend of mine asked me how I imagine myself, the only thing I could think for myself was that I shine. Wherever I go, whatever, whatever I do, I wanted to shine. I believed that the more I touch and help people, the more I will shine. I never left this feeling ever since. So I focused on helping people, but first, there was something else I had to do. As Carl Jung once said, your vision will become only clear if you can look into your own heart. I knew that I would never ever be able to look into my own heart if I wouldn't lessen the fear inside of me. So I listed the negative feelings which make me sad, angry, fearful or concerned. I decided to change these feelings in two steps. First, analyze them. How do I feel them? Why do I feel them? How to get rid of them? I want to talk about three concerns I had at that time and their analysis. I was very much afraid of being jobless and unemployed, which happened over and over again. I handled it somehow, and I know I would handle it again. What is the worst thing that could happen to me? Would I end up on the streets without food or water? I know that I have people that would never, ever let me and my son to be left in such a situation. So if this case is out of question, so what is the cause of my biggest fear? Is it being unable to go to fancy restaurants, parties, and holidays? Is it so bad being unable to do these things that I let the system ruin my life? Maybe it's a kind of fear that formed inside my mind without my knowing it consciously and questioning it. Second concern I had, I thought now that I'm middle-aged, it's too late to change things. 
If I lived for 40 years according others' wants and expectations, I would appreciate even one day if I live it as I wish. My remaining days are so important that I would not hesitate to change things for the coming years of my life. I know I'd be still thinking the same whenever I'm eight years old, if I live that long. What if I fail as a mother? What if I cannot give the opportunity to my son to have a good education and the basis on which to form a good life? In the later stages of life, one struggles more if one doesn't have the ability to face problems. I know it's a mistake to try to prevent problems in my son's life. The best thing I can give to him to be the model of how to perceive life. If I follow my passion and live as fully as I wish, he will see that this is possible. He will know whatever he thinks he can do, he can do. He will, he will be able to find and follow his calling in his life. This is the most valuable thing I can give to him. After all this analysis, the second, was, second step was to implement the new seeds. Every kind of positive thought and feeling about myself, my future and people around me. If you have a health problem, you go to a doctor. The doctor gives you pills, sometimes three times a day. I believe that my therapy is to make myself believe that I will have a beautiful, meaningful life. So I imagined myself three times a day for one month in my most wanted future. First, I didn't believe it. After one month, I, I started to believe in it. After a while, I was certain that I will get there somehow, sometime. My pills were the slow shifts from minute to minute, from negative to positive. I never let negative feelings live inside me for more than one day. I find a way to turn it into positive. Even among friends, if someone starts to talk, to, to talk to negatively about someone, we warn her, don't make gibet, which is an Arabic word for gossiping. Gibet is bad. You will create negative energy and you will harm us. We become what we focus on. I choose to focus on positive. I choose to focus on giving rather than receiving. The more I give, the more I receive. We live in our thoughts and feelings 24-7. There is no escape, even in our sleep. The only thing in this world we can control is our feelings and thoughts. If I keep them always positive, how can I become bitter and unhappy? After I found my aim, Three years ago, two years ago, I found a job which matches the aim of my life. Now I'm working in a corporate social responsibility project where we teach kids to dream, to set targets, to make plans for these targets. We teach them money cannot be the goal. It's the means which will take them to their targets. We explain them the importance of dreaming. If we stop dreaming, how can we create anything? We make them feel that they can be in the driver's seats of their lives. And for the very first time, I've, I feel satisfied in my job. I feel like I'm learning, developing myself every day. Then I realized all those years, I unnecessarily made myself believe that I cannot earn money from a job that I like to do very much. Thus, I broke another false pattern in my mind, which was an obstacle for my happiness. After all these, I will change my self-efforts. Now I know. Whatever happens to me, I have to learn something from it. If someone criticizes me, instead of getting angry and defending myself, I try to find ways to improve myself. Because I know, it, it will be a lesson which will stay with me forever. If something bad happens to me repeatedly, I know that I have to change something in me. Otherwise, it will happen over and over again, hurting me more and more each time. After I changed my mind that we have to go to work only to earn money, I found a job which fills my life with joy. 
I know that we always expect that happiness come from somewhere in some future if we have the right life partner, the right job, more money, children. I know people who have them all but still unhappy. I, only I can create my happiness if I keep my relationship with me and my inner balance intact. If there are seven billion people on earth, it doesn't make sense if I think only of myself and of my family. I can do hundreds of things which would, which would help other people, which I already started in my job and in my spare time. If I can make someone question his beliefs and change his view into a positive way, this could make a big difference in his life and I would be very happy. As I am now, I know my own value. I don't need anyone to approve of my value. If I don't believe in myself, how can I make believe anyone in me? I know that as long as I, as I can see the good in people, I will be surrounded by good people. So face your fears. Don't run away from them. The more you run away from them, the more you, you invite them. Even now, I'm facing one of my biggest fears. I couldn't even talk in front of two people. Now I'm completely out of my comfort zone. But the minute you face your fears, you see that it's not that big as you think it is. And you feel the power that you can achieve anything you want. There are no unsolvable problems. Only sometimes you cannot see the solutions. Everyone has something to add to this world, so find it. Don't just live. Don't find just a job. Find what you really want to do. You don't even have to earn money from it at first. Maybe later it will be your profession. Who knows? Think what you want to leave behind. Find your greater purpose and make yourself believe in it. Don't make excuses not to follow your heart. Don't let your responsibilities ruin your life. If I could do it after age 40, I know you can do it too. I want to finish my talk with a quotation of a friend of mine, Mert. The aim of our lives is to live a life with an aim. Thank you. <laughs>